In this video, we're gonna talk about a trader's guide to position sizing. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so a beginner's guide or really a simple guide to position sizing from a trader's perspective. This people, this is actually a lot of people get wrong when they're first starting trading. And it's understandable because it's easy to kind of get sucked into the, fall into the big trap that we all fall into from time to time with trading, which is wanting to trade more size and make more money. We'll talk more on that in a second. Okay, so let's say for example, we have a 10,000 pound account, 10,000 euros, $10,000, could be less, could be more, just for argument's sake to make these numbers nice and easy. And we've said in our trading plan, that we're going to risk no more than 2% of our total account value on each trade. Now that's gonna be different for each individual. Some people that might be too conservative, some people might be too aggressive, some people might wanna risk less, some people might wanna risk more. Obviously it's gonna depend on your account balance as well. There's gonna be loads of variables in there, but the point is you're making this decision before you're taking the trade. And we've done other videos on this before, I've talked about how you come around this number, maybe you need to work out how many trades you're gonna take in a day, a week, a month, a year, whatever it may be, but you know that number has to come from somewhere and you have to kind of stick to that number. So 2% risk, 10,000 pound account is giving us a 200 pound risk per trade. Okay, so we know now that for each trade, we don't wanna risk more than 200 pounds. Fine, that's done, that's settled. Forget about that for the time being. Now we're looking at a trade. We've highlighted this trade here and it's come down and we decided that we want to go long. So we think, okay, what price is it? Let's just make up a, pr a price here, 103.60. And we forget about our position size at the moment. We forget about our risk. Very rarely do we do that, but we do for the time being. And we just focus on this chart. And we might say, okay, you know what? There's a reasonable bit of support at 103.30. You know, I want to be uh, stop my stop below it. Whatever your decision making process is, this isn't, this isn't kind of a practical session. This is more a case of position sizing. So we decided to put our stop at 103.10. Nothing to do with position size at this point, guys, purely to do with the pattern that's presented itself to us. Maybe that's uh, uh, an ATR of the, of the daily range. Maybe that's, as like I say, support level that's been broken below a previous day's low. But there's a logical reason for that. And the logical reason normally for a stop is that it negates the reason for the trade so we've got our stop loss in fine and maybe also this is this perhaps is a, a bigger drive up and it's a pullback buy whatever so the point is we just put the stop in based on the premise of the trade only and that's the key point here okay so there we've got our stop and it's 50 pips in this in this instance or it could be 50 ticks if we train something else or 50 cents whatever it may be 50 incremental moves from the distance from our long to our stop loss point so we go 200 which is the total risk we're prepared to take divided by the number of ticks number of pips between our entry and our stop 50 and that's giving us a uh, four so if we're spread betting we want to do four pounds a point if we're cfds and it's and the increment is that is one uh, pound per point move be careful which cfd you're trading that's going to be four obviously if we're trading shares it's going to be 400 shares because each share is going to be equal to four dollars each increment 400 shares will be four dollars each incremental cent move but you can work that out and know based on the contract you're trading or the product you're trading how much is worth per tick and then work it back from that the point is guys is that we have to make sure we're looking at the actual market conditions first and not trying to bolt what we want into it what do i mean by that always work back from your stop not the other way. Many people make this mistake and I'm gonna to have to put my hands up and say I've made this mistake as well. I've made most of the mistakes. You say to yourself, you know what? I wanna make more money. I wanna be 10 pound a point on this. I don't wanna be four pound a point. I wanna be 10 pound a point because it's a good trade. Blah, blah, blah. You start to convince yourself it's the best trade ever. But then you say, you know what? I don't really want to risk 500 pounds on it. And from a spread betting point perspective, if 10 pound a point and with 50 pips risk, 500 pounds, I don't want to risk, I'm not comfortable risking 500 pounds. Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm comfortable risking 200 pounds, that's it. So I'm now gonna move my stop up to 20 pips, okay? And I'm gonna move it here. Instead of having the full 50, let me move it 20. It's not gonna go 20 anyway, I think I can do that. And what happens, of course, price goes down, pings you out, you lose your 200, 
and, and, and you're on to the next one. And more than likely, it probably goes down 25, goes up and it rallies. And if you'd have been in your sensible position size, you'd have made yourself a nice bit of money on it, but you try to be too aggressive. And that's the thing that many of us, mistake that many of us make, guys, is we try to leverage up a bit more than we should. And then because we're not comfortable with the real risk, the real risk is that's the real risk. It's 50 pips, that's the trade, the risk is 50 pips. You wanna do it 100 pound a point, doesn't matter. That The risk is 50 pips. And then we try and cramp that up a bit and say, well, actually, no, I'll use a tighter stop, thinking that really it's less risk, but it's more risk because we're going to get stopped out more often. We're not going to be taking the trades that we want to take and they're just going to do damage to the account, which is not what we want to do. So bear that in mind, guys. Make sure you have got a good grasp on how much you want to risk per trade, percentage-wise, money-wise, whatever that may be, the comfort, comfort level you have. Um, work that out for yourself. And then the key thing is to work back from the trade that you're doing and have your position size to suit. Your, your stop may be massively wide and you might have to go small. And in that case, you might say, you know what, it's not worth it for me. The risk reward is no good. I've got to go too small, I'm not going to do it. Then rather than and, and pass on the trade, as opposed to saying, well, actually, you know what, I'll take it at normal size, but I'll decrease the stop loss. You know, have, be strict and be disciplined on it and say, that's where the stop needs to be. I can't adjust that. I need to trade to those conditions. All right, guys, that's your trader's guide to position sizing. Thumbs up if you like it, comments in the comment section below. As always, take care, keep the risk managed. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.